everyone. Welcome to Core Connections, your health, fitness, and wellness podcast designed so you can take control of your health to live the active life you love. I'm your host, Erica Zeal, and for 20 years now, I've been helping women live a healthier, active life, pain-free. And if you're ready to say goodbye to those aches and pains, incontinence, teal diastasis recti, then join me inside my core rehab program, where you can join others who've experienced life-changing results so you too can live an active, pain-free life. Not only do you get access to learn my exact techniques that I've been changing lives with every single day, you also get access to me during my monthly live group coaching calls. So head on over to corerehabprogram.com to learn more. Again, that's corerehabprogram.com. Okay, you guys, today I'm really excited for this conversation. So a while back, I reached out to all of you. I sent an email out um, to all of you and said, hey, send me your questions. I want to know what questions you have because, well, this podcast is here for all of you. So I want to really know what questions you have so I can do episodes really geared around answering those specific questions. Today is all about answering a question from Eleanor. So I was really excited when she reached out to me. She had heard me on another podcast and heard that I had talked about the loss of height does not need to be a normal part of aging. And so her question is for someone who is only 55 and has lost almost two inches of height and whose doctor just laughed when I expressed shock at this, this was eye-opening. Can you do a session on loss of height for menopause and postmenopausal women? what causes it, how to prevent it, what to do if you've already lost significant height and so on. There's not that much info out there about this topic. Okay. I'm so excited for this conversation because I have this conversation a lot with clients and over the years I've helped many clients gain heights. And it's, it's so funny. I remember this, I feel like I've shared this story before, but I'm going to share it again. And this may have been a story I shared on this other podcast as well, but, um, a client that I had worked with years and years ago in California, and I would, we would do some invision inversion work and stuff periodically. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but I remember, and she was in her sixties and she did Pilates with me, you know, a couple times a week for the most part. And I remember she went to her doctor for her annual physical and they were just like shocked. They remeasured her so many times because they were like, wait, how did you, how did you get taller? That doesn't make any sense to us. Cause they were looking back at, you know, were previous years of measurements and her getting a little bit shorter in time. And she had gained, I, I remember it was at least a full inch and her doctors were just blown away at it. And I said, well, yeah. That's absolutely possible. We've been doing the work to help her get more height back. Okay, so let's kind of break this down a little bit, shall we? So one thing, and I don't want to say this to scare anybody, but I want to say it so that you definitely go get the right tests done to know that if you are at risk for osteoporosis, um, if you have a significant you know, loss of height, and I would say two inches is definitely considered significant, I would be checking to make sure you don't have osteoporosis or osteopenia at the start of osteoporosis, because here's the thing. There are things that we can do to help reverse. So the sooner we can catch this, the better. So you guys, there's an episode with um, Kevin known as the bone coach on my podcast um, from a while back that we talked all about osteoporosis on that episode. So definitely for more information on that, go listen to that. He talks about the labs and tests and all that stuff that you should be doing. So that would be something that for any of you listening, um, Eleanor, for you as well, I would definitely be checking to see what your bones are looking like right now. Um, but that said, you guys just remember with all tests and labs, I want you to look at it as it's a symptom of what's going on in your body and know that okay, we have with this information, I don't want you to get like scared or freaked out about it or be like, oh my gosh, it's only downhill from here. No, we want to take that information and I want you to empower yourself with it and be like, okay, my bone density is not where I want it to be. So what can I do about it? A side note on that is, and Kevin is actually one that taught me this was we need to be testing our bone density. You guys like around 30, because it's our mid thirties when our bones can really, we can start to really decrease in our quality of bone. Okay. So I don't want this just to be about bone health today, but this is a big part of it. So bone health really matters. So 
obviously movement matters for that. Having a really good nutrition, you guys, calcium. Yes. And no, let's talk about calcium for a second. When it comes to bone health, this is why, again, I'm a huge fan of testing, doing like an HTA mineral test. I do it with all my clients, done it on myself because I actually find that of everyone I've worked with, very few women actually need calcium more. What they need is they need the supporting minerals to make sure that we're driving that calcium that they do have into their bones. Okay. So K2 is one of those. So I always have clients, uh, you know, and again, this is just kind of a blanketed statement. So for your individual self, I am not a doctor and I'm not working with you guys individually, but this is just information I want you guys to be aware of. So please take it and go do some more searching on your own and talk to your doctor and see what's the best fit for you. But when I um, take vitamin D3, always take vitamin D3 with K2, unless there's a reason you can't take K2. So um, that said, because that can help to drive, uh, K2 can help to drive um, calcium into our bones. Because here's the thing, we can have a lot of calcium in our body, but if we don't have the right minerals to transport it actually into our bones, then that calcium actually could be detrimental to our health. Um, so again, we should do a whole episode on calcium, um, because it is, it's very interesting. And it's something that I have said for a long, long time. I have never been sold on this fact that we need to actually be supplementing with calcium because you guys were getting it. If you're eating healthy, you're getting a little bit of calcium from foods. If you're drinking, you know, mineral water, you're getting it from foods. If you're taking, you know, mineral, uh, another mineral electrolytes that have a balance of all sorts of minerals, which I think everybody should be taking a little bit of that because minerals are absolutely important, but here's the big, the bigger piece and more important factor when it comes to bone health is at least again, this is my perspective and knowing what I know about fascia. And I was rereading one of my books the other day that we're using for my core rehab, uh, level one instructor training course. That's going to be coming out soon is that, <laughs> bone, we are now classifying as fascia, which excited the heck out of me when I read that, because I've been saying that for years because I'm like, well, wait, bone is made up of collagen matrix. So if we are working on imp improving the way our fascial system works, which includes our bone health, then, oh, we can improve our bone, our bone health by focusing on improving the way our fascia works um, because bone is largely made up of the collagen matrix. So you guys adding, uh, I, I talked about this. I feel like we just talked about this last week um, a little bit, you know, with tissue health is, you know, lots of vitamin C or good amounts, quality vitamin C to help with your own body's collagen synthesis, which again, could that help bone health? Absolutely. Because bones are, you know, made up of collagen, a lot of collagen. So if we're improving our collagen synthesis of our body, could that help our bones? Absolutely. I'm not saying anything's guaranteed. Of course, you know, there's so many factors. And again, this is why testing can be so important, but then adding collagen into your diet. I think that is so important and it's got to be quality, a quality, clean, um, collagen and so the cheaper stuff out there, you guys, I hate to break it to you, but it's probably not of good quality. That's why I, I have my own to offer all of you because I'm a big fan of having quality, quality supplements. I'd rather have you take, you know, half a dose of a really good quality supplement. So it lasts you longer than taking a full dose or two doses of something that's not really good quality. And it's like, well, what is that? Is that even benefiting your body at all? So anyway. I'll get off my high horse with collagen, but I think it is so, so beneficial and so important. So nutrition matters. You guys do some more searching on calcium. Don't just be thinking, oh, cause I'm taking calcium. My bones are protected. Maybe, maybe not. We want to make sure that calcium is getting driven into the bones where it needs to go. And then let's talk about movement here. Okay. So movement matters for bone health for helping to prevent loss of loss of height. So there's kind of, there's multiple things going on here, right? We want good quality bone health. So our bones stay strong. So we don't start getting breakdown of bones, um, in our spine and our hips and all of that. Right. So that's why we can't just talk about just fascia in this. Well, we can, because 
We can in the sense that bones can be considered part of the fascial system. This is a newer concept that if I just say fascia, we don't instantly think bones, but I want you to think that, okay? So our bones are part of our fascial system. And so we need to be doing, yes, strength training, but in a fascial way, right? That's the con- that's the foundation of everything that I teach. That's why I'm always teaching you to think about lightly zipping up and lengthening through your core. Because even right now, if you're sitting, standing, if you're watching this video, listening to me, whatever you're doing, I want you to bring some awareness into your body. How are you holding your body right now? Are you slouched forward at your computer? Um, are you out walking and just kind of going through the motions? Are you sitting in your car? Are you sitting at, you know, whatever you're doing, I want you to now write, think, okay, um, can I just start to lift up through the top of my head a little bit more, not to be like shoulders back and stand tall. I don't like that because that causes all sorts of other issues. It's just, just gentle lifting up through the top of your head. So the cool thing about that concept that I, it's not even a concept, it's a technique. Like think about doing that all the time, really, but be gentle with it is it's going to help to stimulate your fascial system. It can really help to strengthen not only bone, but fascia and your, and your muscles around your spine and throughout your entire body, right? So that we are creating more strength and stability of our spinal column. So we lose the space for many, for the biggest reason we lose space is poor posture right? The other one can be the osteoporosis route and things like that, or a combination of both. This is why I get so passionate about posture and why so many people start to get such better results with just how their body feels um, and how they're breathing and their confidence and all of that. Because when they start to pay attention to posture, this is also why I am reminding all of you who have kids Remind those kiddos of yours to lengthen up, stand tall. Again, not sh- not like, sh- don't jam those shoulders back. I don't like that cue at all because when we jam our shoulders back, it tenses up your neck. And you can even see if you're watching my video, if I draw my shoulders back, you can like see that I tense through my neck. And so I'm probably exaggerating a little bit, but that is naturally what, what tends to happen if we constantly think, oh, shoulders back. So I don't like that cue. I like the cue of zipping up and then lengthening tall through the top of your head, relaxing your shoulders. And that will naturally get you to use your deep core, right? So pelvic floor, the deep layers of your core. I reminder you guys that our organs inside of our body are suspended by fascia. So we have to not just think about pelvic floor holding up everything. No, no, no. Shift that perspective. We want to think about, we want to be taller and stronger and that we want to strengthen that fascia and create more space through our torso, which is going to one, improve your breathing, which can help you get out of pain, which can help to create more space through your, especially your lumbar spine when you learn how to breathe better. So there's so many facets to this, but the most important with the movement piece of it is lengthening, 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 lengthening. That's why I love the Pilates concepts. That's why whenever I'm teaching anything, my first thing is lengthen and then we move. Okay. Because if we just move, we're likely just dumping into somewhere in our body where we don't really want to be. And that lengthening activates our fascia. What else happens when we lengthen through our body is we activate the fascia. Guess what that fascia does to our bones. It's going to stimulate the bones. Okay. Again, that's why we can talk about, you know, yes, like doing more, we could say high intensity or load weight training again, good for bones, but so is the lengthening concept because that's going to pull on the bones and stimulate them to become even stronger. Okay. So let's talk about, I've got two movements that I really, really love for helping to lengthen through the spine in particular. And that is back extensions. And if you're not doing back extensions regularly, um, I recommend doing them every single day, especially as we move into these colder months, we tend to be a little bit more stagnant in our body. We tend to sit a little bit more. And what's one of the best ways to combat that and to start to improve our posture is by doing back extensions. Now we have to talk about back extensions in the sense that 
it's not about lift, just lifting up like, okay, so we all know what a back extension is. You lay on your stomach and you lift your chest off the mat, or you lift up with your spine, right? Okay. That's fine to a point. The problem is so many people that do just a traditional back extension are like, oh, but Erica, it hurts my back. So I'm scared to do them. Um, maybe you've even, it's caused back spasming before or whatever it might be. Okay. So we have to shift the way we're thinking about doing our back extensions. It comes down to, we want to lay on our stomach and you want to think about lengthening first before you ever, ever even attempt to lift off of your mat with your back muscles, you need to lengthen. And I'm talking a full fascial length from your toes through your core, through your spine, all the way through the top of your head. We have fascial lines that connect all the way from our feet to our head. So we have to do that first. That in itself can help you to start to create more space between your vertebrates of your spine, which can help you to become stronger. So when you are standing, sitting, moving, all those things, those muscles, that fascial tissue is becoming a little bit stronger every time you do this. Now, the a couple other key pieces with back extensions, we want to lengthen. That's the most important. Then when we start to even lift off a little a tiny bit, don't think about just lifting your body up. I want you to think about what muscles you're using, using your mid back. The other thing is so many people just lift and dump into their low back, which just exacerbates low back pain. We don't want to do that at all. So I want you lengthening. And then I want you to think about barely lifting your back off. Okay. Just enough to where you can feel the mid back starting to work. Now, the other piece of this is you have to start to use your deep core, that gentle pelvic floor, lower belly inside your body. Remember I mentioned a little bit ago that our organs are suspended inside of our body with fascia. Okay. We need to, we need to activate that as we are doing our back extension. So we have to stop thinking, oh, we're doing a back extension just to strengthen our back. No, 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 no. We can do a back extension to strengthen our entire deep core. Absolutely everything in our torso can be getting stronger. So what we want to think about is we're lengthening. We're starting to activate more of the mid back muscles. The lower back, yes, is going to turn on, but it should never feel like it's doing all the work. Lower back, think more stability. Mid back, think more strength. This also can help your neck and all of that too. And I always tell people in the beginning, you have to have a really, really, really small range of motion or our old habits take over. So back extensions, do them every single day. Don't feel like you have to do big ranges of motion. I'd rather have you barely move and start to feel them correctly than have too big of range. And then you're like, oh man, my back still hurts because I do back extensions. You guys, I teach like everybody how to do back extensions and they do them in a way that they're like, oh my gosh, I've never done them this way before because they've always hurt my back. Well, I need you all doing back extensions um, because that's going to help to strengthen your entire core, not just the back line. And then as we get stronger, so we're doing the actual physical movement exercise on a mat. Then we take that into our daily movement, our sitting, our standing, our walking, or whatever else we're doing. We want to bring that concept in and think about that lengthening through our body. This takes time. We, it's, you know, we didn't create bad postural habits overnight. They happened for whatever reason, whether it's just, we get stressed, right? When we get stressed, our nervous system tightens and we tend to like lock down in our body. Um, if we have an injury to something, our body tends to protect it. Just, you know, as we get a little bit older, that tissue can become more dehydrated and tight. So we wake up in the morning, we're like, oh, my back feels tight or whatever it might be. And we just kind of stay in that tight restrictedness through our body. So we need to work out of that. Nutrition is huge. You guys, if you feel like you always feel tight and you always feel inflamed, start working on your nutrition as well. That's why I don't just have like a clear cut, like one answer to answer this question. Cause there's a multitude of things. Movement is a necessity. Having a good quality diet. That's, you know, good quality animal protein, good quality oils, vegetables, fruits, very little sugar. You know, I'm obviously a you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of no gluten because it causes so much inflammation. If you have pain, um, I would, the gluten's got to go. The gluten's got to go for sure. If you're, if you're dealing potentially with osteoporosis, like 
no gluten because I feel like it just exacerbates the tissue's inflammation. And we want our tissue working well and strong and healthy so that we are helping to prevent or possibly reverse um, this aging process of our bones and our tissue, which we absolutely can. Something else that I really, really love to help combat um, shrinking of posture your shrinking of height is inversion. So I will do that with private clients here on my Cadillac. I'll put their legs up if, if they're, if that's appropriate for them. Something else that's easier for most people to do is do, doing like just an inversion table. That can be a really good, easy way. Now I know like most of you are not going to have access to that at your house. So if you ever go to like a physical therapy place or I don't know if other gyms or boutique fitness places might have one look around and see if there's one you can use some. It is something if you're willing to invest, I would highly recommend investing in it. Um, I wouldn't now the thing with inversion, it is something that you don't just want to be like, Oh, I've never done inversion before. And I'm going to just now all of a sudden start tipping upside down and hanging upside down for however long you can tolerate it. I would first start with some of the movement stuff I've talked about with the back of getting that tissue on when we can get our tissue on and working and feeling stronger and more stable, then we can actually open up more easily. I don't recommend someone just go do inversion and be like, Oh, it's going to fix everything. No, you have to do the strengthening, lengthening piece with it on your own. Um, because while the inversion can be really good to just start to open things up better, I wouldn't rely on just inversion work. I know it can be absolutely amazing. And the thing also too with inversion, I want everyone to know is if you're going to go from standing upright to nearly upside down, or at least to some angle towards upside down, remember that's a lot of like blood shifting that's happening. We go from more blood at our feet to like on, on our head. Now, you know, you get that feeling in your head, like, oh my gosh, I can't only tolerate so much of this. So when you I would recommend going slowly, going into, again, some form of an inversion. You may not want to go super inverted in the beginning. You want to, I'm always a fan of people working into this. So when you start, you want to start slowly and then you want to move slowly into that inversion. And then as you come up, you want to slowly come up from inversion. I never let a client go from completely inverted to standing upright like that. Like that is dangerous to me. So I... I always have them come, you know, maybe we come like to parallel to the floor and I have them hang out there for like 30 seconds to just allow their blood to more slowly equalize back out to the body and then slowly come up to stand. So that's just a cautionary thing with inversion. So those are some of my top things, you guys, when it comes to helping prevent, uh, you know, height and to start to get some height back. So do that testing. If you're concerned or your doctor possibly is concerned with osteoporosis, osteopenia, again, starting at the age of 30, you guys, after I talked to Kevin and we learned about, and he was telling me all this stuff about, you know, bone health, um, because something honestly myself, right. I didn't really think about it as, you know, now a 40 year old, I was this is not something I really thought about, Oh, we need to actually test till we're even older, but he helped me shift that. And again, it's, it's a whole thing of like knowledge is power. So if we can just say, starting at the age of 30, doing, you know, our tests for bone health, it just to give us and know where we're at then. And then if everything looks great, awesome. We'll keep up the good habits, check again, 10 years later, make sure everything's looking fine because it's so much easier to prevent. I'm just going to say that again. I always talk about that, especially with core rehab. Like I love when I get people in there that are doing core rehab as prevention. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. But it's also harder to think, well, everything's fine. I feel fine. I don't have anything. Why would I want to check and do this extra expense or whatever it is? Well, because you might catch something that you're like, I felt fine. I didn't realize anything was starting to become off. Then now when you actually do a test, that's why I love labs. Labs can be so eye-opening. Then you're like, oh gosh, now I know this. I'm so glad I know this information so I can really work on prevention. Okay. But that said, don't worry if you're, if you have osteoporosis, you're at risk for it, or you have, you're like Eleanor who has lost some, you know, a couple inches already. I don't ever want anyone to feel defeated. I want you to feel empowered and feel like, oh gosh, I've got this. I can do this and just keep working on all the pieces we talked about and the nutrition, get the labs done. So you know what your minerals look like, work on your, your, um, absorption of your gut, 
do the movement I talked about, possibly some inversion. Now, if you've already got osteoporosis, one thing I will say with inversion is talk with your doctor to make sure it's not too aggressive for you. Okay. So that said kind of all the warnings with that, because again, this can be an individualized uh, situation, what's going on with each and everyone, but in general, these are some really good tips that I hope help guide you all in the right direction. And then posture, 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 pay attention to your posture as you're moving throughout your day. I cannot stress that enough. Um, in the beginning, when you're, if you, you know, you feel like you've lost a lot of, a lot of height and you're really working on posture, your body's going to fatigue and tire out. And that's okay. It's just like any muscles. Like we got to retrain our body. So just remember, be kind to yourself, start where you're at and slowly implementing, uh, you know, these things that we've talked about today. And if you haven't done back extensions, go work on those back extensions, but remember, keep your range small, focus on lengthening first. That might be all you do for the next couple of weeks is just lay on your mat and focus on lengthening through your body. Because I like when you're laying down because it can, you can kind of feel some feedback. You can feel that stimulation of your tissue. And then once you're like, okay, I feel like I'm ready to start a little teeny tiny muscle activation into some back extensions, then you can slowly work into that. Okay, guys, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can always, you know, reach out to any of my emails you may receive. You can find me on Instagram. If you've got additional questions to this conversation or of course others, please let me know because I love coming on here, answering your questions um, so that I know it's really, it's really beneficial for you. Cause I know if Eleanor has this question, I know she is not the only one. So thank you all so much for tuning in, share this episode with others in your life, because you never know what little piece of information could be transformational for them. So I look forward to seeing y'all back next week.